Jordan, how did the combine experience go for you? What's the draft process been like leading up? It's wonderful. You know, this thing you dream about as a kid you want to do. So anything that we do is like a dream come true to me. That's how I look at it. That's my outlook. But you just keep working. You continue to work and just enjoy life. You got to be where your feet are. So we're enjoying the moment today. I'm glad to be back with our brothers and be back at Sanford Stadium. What's going on, good people? Having a beautiful time. Uh, Serendipity Season 2, Episode 28. I want to talk to him about what we're going to discuss today. Oh, yes, sir. We're going to discuss self-reflection, self-evaluation, and the transfer of energy. Yes, Lord. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Serendipity with Inky Johnson. Across all podcast platforms, including YouTube, be sure to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Peace. What's going on, good people? Welcome to Serendipity Podcast Season 2, Episode 28. I'm Ink. I'm Oak. How you feeling, Wazo? Oh, man, I feel pretty good. How about yourself? Good, man. Life treated me well, you know. Woke up grateful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, tapping into gratitude, man. I'm good. I try try my best to tap into gratitude. It doesn't always happen, but when I do it, I definitely notice the difference. Yeah. Like, for me, gratitude... uh, becomes like an anchor, you know. Anytime I feel off, anytime I'm not uh, having a good day, or even just not feeling, not feeling my best. Yeah. You, you just think about how how good life is. Yeah, man. You know how good it is in terms of the people that you got around you, um, the influences, the experiences you're gonna have, and then what always happens. I promise you, it always happens. Once I start thinking that way, mm-hmm. good stuff start happening. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It 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 just it kind of it creep up on me because I maybe that night I think about it if I just reflect back on the day. Mm-hmm. And um like, oh, this morning, man, it was I just wasn't feeling it. Then by 11, 12 o'clock, something may happen at school or if the weekend, something happens, get a phone call, have a great conversation or something that just is uplifting. No doubt. But it starts, you know, with the notion of expecting it. Yeah. Expecting to have good moments, expecting to have a good day. Gratitude in advance. Not waiting for it to happen, but having the the wherewithal to be on the front side of it. No that's doubt. that's the strength. That's the beauty. That's the freedom that uh that we all have the opportunity to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Start us off, man, with a quote card from the Sugar Boo. In company, it says each of us must turn inward and destroy in himself all that he thinks he ought to destroy in others. Each of us must turn inward and destroy in himself all that he thinks he ought to destroy in others. Can I don't get no realer than that. Let me read this, man. Get no realer than that. Because I think the people need to really hear this one. Each of us must turn inward Mm. and destroy. Yes. In oneself, yes. All that one thinks, one ought to destroy in others. Yes. It, yes. Man, like this is the epitome to me of everything is a you issue. Yes, sir. It is. It epitomizes it that wherever we want to throw daggers and whether those places where we want to judge, mm. where we you know think somebody is less than and our superior attitude may come into place or whatever. Or those people that we don't like, uh, those traits that we don't like in people, right? Yes, sir. It's really that's that's what's going on inside, yep. and you and we're projecting it outwardly. Mm. So every time you feel like you upset, every time you feel like somebody has done something that uh, that you don't like or that pisses you off, if you will, just think about it. Just stop and think about it for a second. That's the thing that you don't like about yourself. That's the thing that is disturbing you about you. Mm. And you may have mastered, you may have put the lipstick on the pig enough times to where you almost think it's cute. Yeah. But yeah. in in reality, that is you really just saying to yourself, that is your spirit saying to you, I got to change this. I got to be better than this. I got to do different than this. Absolutely. But what we'll do is we'll put it out there to other people. And, and once we see them change, Right. Yep. Then it gives us the motivation. It gives us the inspiration to change. Mm-hmm. But 
the other side happens too. When we put it out there and say, somebody, you need to be a nicer person. Yeah. And when they are not, when they refuse to be a nicer person, that gives us license to be a hard, mean, despiteful, whatever person within ourselves. Mm. So either either way, when we're projecting it, the reaction uh, that the other person, the other people, that society, the reaction that they have, yep. that it, that gives us permission to respond the same way. Mm. It's good. So it's almost like it's good. It's almost like we're being a coward. Mm. Yeah. Or being a follower. Like the true definition of a leader is that you walk on something that you know to be right. You walk on the convictions of your heart. That's then true. other people are going to feed off of that, feed That's off of that true. energy, and then they're going to follow it. Yeah, They're not following you. They're following your energy mm -hmm. because all you're doing is inspiring them to look within themselves and give them, give people, it gives people permission to change, to be better. Absolutely. But it also gives people permission to be a butthole or to be rude or to be arrogant. Either way, you people are looking at you for permission to be however they want to be. Yes, sir. So each of us must look within ourselves and change those things that uh, we think should be uh, destroyed in others. Man, it's um, when I hear that, I think, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look at everybody in the world. We all live in glass everybody. houses. Everybody. That's what everybody. I'm about to say. Everybody lives in a glass house. Everybody lives in a glass house. Don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. But also, um, I feel like one of the hardest things to do in the world is to work on yourself, to humble yourself enough to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like when they say um, with coaches, you can't be a coach and be uncoachable. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be a coach and just always be right and not be coachable. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. people got different perspectives, different angles that they see things from, right? And so when you think about working on yourself, when you look at a person and you get ready to judge or speak about a person in a certain manner, you got to also stop and look at yourself. It's like when you teach kids, when you blame and you point at a person, the other three fingers looking right back at you, right? And so when you talk about staying steady in terms of the pursuit of growth, Stand steady in the pursuit of being a better person. One of the most challenging things for us as people to do is when you look at a person and you acknowledge a certain behavior is to look in the mirror and look at yourself and acknowledge the same behavior. Yep. That's one of the most challenging things yep. for us as people. Because when you look at yourself, you got to acknowledge like, no, nah, I ain't there yet in that area. Mm -hmm. Now I need to grow in that area, right? The constant pursuit of self-mastery. Is what we're speaking of. And so the next time you get ready to judge and point out flaws in another person, don't throw stones when you live in a glass house, baby. And and um a question I got for you. Yes, sir. Or or just just your thoughts on it, right? Mm -hmm. What is what do you think the ultimate teaching is? Like a, a a great teacher, what are the characteristics you think that makes uh a teacher great? And when I'm saying teacher, not necessarily in the classroom. Not on the ball, not necessarily right. on the ball field, because in any arena, could be a CEO, could be a parent, anyone. Like, what makes a great teacher? I think what makes a great teacher, one of the things is experience, but I think also studying and having the courage to study what you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if I say I'm a Christian and I'm not Muslim, but having the courage to study Islam, having the courage gotcha. to study Catholicism. Right. And so even when I have a debate, it's a well-balanced debate. And I'm not just arguing from the standpoint of, oh, I believe this mm -hmm. and you believe this. So you're wrong. No, mm -hmm. I got a well-balanced perspective, well-balanced debate because I've studied other things, but not only studied it, I'm open to hearing other people's perspective about why they believe in what they believe in. It doesn't make either one of us right or wrong, but I'm open enough and I have enough experiences and I've studied enough to have a well-balanced debate. And so I think what makes a great teacher is experience, but also having a foundation to where you've studied. And if you haven't studied, having the courage to be open to hear one's perspective about whatever it is that they feel or they stand on. Got it. What Got about it. you? From your background in education and the uh, several angles that you've attacked it from, what do you um, think? You know, uh, uh, you might, you probably can finish this sentence. A lot of people will say, uh, uh, do as I what they say? Do as I say, not right. as I do. Right. Right? 
So, to me, that's the that's the base bottom line level of teaching, mm -hmm. which is what they're really trying to teach is uh, obedience, submission. Gotcha. Right. That is the first order of teaching. If any type of higher level of teaching uh, is going to occur, submission, being obedient starts first. Right. Then you have the second level is um, which is when you're able to show someone right. like you can you live the life that you sing about. You live the life that you talk about. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's some higher level teaching. When we we always say when my words and my actions match. Right. You walking in high integrity. Right. Yeah. You're really you know, if I'm saying I, I love math mm -hmm. and then you also see me doing math problems or always somewhere working on math. Okay. Now, I'm 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 at the the I would say the mid level of teaching. Okay. I think the highest level of teaching. People will um how do I say it? People talk about what they what they believe, people talk about uh what they know. Mm -hmm. But when you really really get to the core of a person, it is what they teach. Mm. And this is what I mean by that. What I teach is what I would do whether you with me or not. Right. Whether you were in the classroom or not, whether you were in the truck with me or not, I'm still going to listen to Good and Marv. I'm still going to listen to Outcast. I'm still going to analyze it, even if I'm talking to myself. Oh, like, no. what did he just mean? What did they mean by that lyric? Like, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to the world? I'm still going to do that. I'm still, I was going to show up at the gym at 6 a.m. whether you came or not. Right. Yep. Right? Yep. I'm still, if I'm at the house and watching the football game, if you're there, or you know, when I say you, anyone, right? right, right, right? right, right. If you're there, I'm still going to stop, rewind, get mad because he didn't set the edge. Right. Get mad because he took a false step, right? Or applaud the fact that this receiver blocked downfield. Right. If you're there, then you're going to see my excitement and I'm going to explain it. But if you're not there, I'm still going to explain it, even talking to myself. Okay. So now what you're doing is you're teaching. Gotcha. Because teaching is irrelevant of who's there. Hmm. It's irrelevant of who's being taught. Yeah. Because it's who you are. Absolutely. It's authentically who you are. You're not putting on the show. Yeah. I always say it like this. I uh, you know, was going to, when I had young people, when I had my kids, my my own sons, I was going to provide experiences for them. No doubt. Right? I'm gonna take them to the zoo. Yeah. Because just worldly uh exposure. No doubt. Right? We're gonna go on vacation. Yeah. We're gonna do these things that is going to be beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have kids, I'm not going to the damn zoo. <laughs> so I wasn't teaching. Right. I was yeah. simply showing. Showing, yeah. Right? Gotcha. I can tell you that it's important to learn about things. Mm -hmm. I can show you that it's important to learn about things. That's cool. Yeah. But the ultimate teaching is that any person does is what they do regardless of whether someone is there or not. That's good. Because now you are just being authentically yourself. Yeah. That's, to me, what the ultimate level of teaching is. And and you can see that. Like, in terms of just when a person lives what they do, you can see it. Like, yeah. They yeah. eat it, sleep it, breathe it. Like, you can you could tell the difference between a cat that really believes and does what they do, like, for real, for real, mm -hmm. and a cat that'll do it if it's based upon, like, Money, if it's based upon yes, external resources, now like you talking. can see a difference, right? right. You can see a difference. Like if I go in a room of five or I go in a room of fifty thousand people, my approach, my process, my presentation will have the same energy, same perspective, same preparation, because it's not about the five or the fifty thousand. It's not exactly. about if the gig is supposed to be big or not big. The opportunity and what I feel like I'm blessed to do, I cherish that. Mm -hmm. I respect that. I honor, I admire that. So I'm going to bring the same energy and the same respect to it regardless. If I'm in a room, I'd be in a mirror, bro. Yeah. I'd be in a mirror like the same way. <laughs> in there speaking, talking. My wife, who you talking to in there? Who? Me? Yeah. <laughs> you know who what I'm saying? Lit? It's prep. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm picking that up. That's I got some, man. I, I want to get your perspective on it. It says, what separates the elite it's not their rise, but their response. Mm. What separates the elite is not their rise, but their response. The, the notion of, you know, we are always re uh, reverted back to 
some type of athletics, right? Yeah. When you get hit, when you get hit in the mouth, everybody got a plan to get hit, as Mike Tyson would say, All right? Right. Right. All right. And uh, Evander Holyfield had a plan, <laughs> got hit, and still stuck to that plan, no right? Doubt. So, and he was able to beat Mike twice. Yeah. But it, it really talks about, you know, the Pistons knocking down, kept knocking him down, kept Every knocking day. him down, kept knocking him down. Yeah. No, no uh, response of negativity is simply me and Tim Glover going back in this weight room yeah, and right. get my body ready to be able to go into battle and become victorious. Right. So it's what happens after you get knocked down. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, there are so many cliches about it, but it's so, what makes a cliche a cliche is that it's true. It's true, no doubt. Right? No doubt. It's, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's very simple, but it's true. What, how do you respond to adversity? Absolutely. And the thing that really allows you to respond in a positive manner, in a healthy manner, in a successful manner, mm -hmm. is your mentality. Mm. It's not how big you are. It's not how smart you are. It's not how strong you are. It's not how, basically, really, it's not even how good you are at what you do. It is your mentality that you take into what you do. Yes, sir. That's so true. that means if you got a mentality of resilience, mental toughness, emotional toughness, right? Yes, if you got a, a, a mentality of love, of kindness, then regardless of what comes at you, you're still going to be able to overcome. Yeah. Like Job was strong. Job was is is one of the examples, the story of Job, right? But it's because all the things taken away, all the things taken away. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. No pressure. Yep. The glory is in still standing, still getting right back up. Yes, sir. Not wavering. Yes, sir. That's a mentality. Yes, sir. That's a mentality. Yeah. That's a mentality yeah. of strength, a mentality of faith. That's a mentality of this is a busy young Thundercat that's right here with me. It's live. It's live. It's live. It's live, <laughs> but, man. Uh, but for real, that's it. That's, it's, just, it's just being strong uh, and being your your ability to respond yeah. is really your strength, and, and that's tied to your principles, tied to your character that you've developed for yourself. It's a mentality, bro. It's um. In its simplicity, it's always profound to me when a cat can respond a certain way to a situation that should get them out of their character. Yeah. Right? Right. Like, I think some of the strongest people are the most gracious and humble people. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, cats that treat you a certain way, not because of what you do, they treat you a certain way because what they're capable of doing to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. a different level of strength. It's like if you see a cat piping up at a cat that you know could whoop the cat that's piping up, and he remained patient, he remained uh, gracious, he remained steadfast, he looked at him, oh, bro, it's all good. But you know what this cat capable of. You know if it really got to that point, my man would do you dirty. Yeah. But he patient with you, right? He extends a level of grace to you. Right. That's a true level of strength to me. Right. Because it's based upon his response and not allowing you to get him out of his character because of who he is. Mm -hmm. And so when we think response. I always say it, man, a cat's like everybody knows to do right when everything is going right. It ain't hard. Right. Like cats beat their chest all day when something is going great. That's cool. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Five year old can do that. My man, get a base hit. Hip, hip, hooray. Anybody. Man, hit the shot. Hip. Anybody can do that. But anybody can't get knocked down and fail. Anybody can't do like when Kobe said he shot the air ball and cats came over to him saying, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm good. Get off me. I'm good. This basketball. I'm going to go get my legs strong. I'm good. You ain't got to baby me. It's a part of the process. Ooh, Everybody can't do that. Everybody ain't cut like that. Everybody ain't got the disposition, the spirit, and the mentality to respond like that. Most cats want to get coddled. It's okay. You missed this. It's okay. No, I'm good. I, it's a part of who I'm trying to become. I'm straight. Trust me. This is the process and the pursuit that I signed up for. And so if you sign up for it, you got to be willing to accept everything that comes with it. So, Ink, you said a couple things right there, brother. Yes, sir. Said Kobe shot the shot in the end. They said, you good? Say man, stop! Don't baby me. Yeah, I'm good. So what it what my thought went to is this: 
that mentality of not being resilient yes, sir. is not nature. Mm. Your nature is to be resilient. Yeah. If I cut you right now, mm -hmm. your body go into the mode of starting to heal itself. Mm. Right? Yep. You get hurt right now. Boom. You, we just were talking about my man that lost his leg, the, the pilot. Yes, sir. And what they do, they close his eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So he couldn't see it. Yes, sir. Because in, if he would have saw that his leg was gone, then nature, right, would have sent to sent through him a level of panic or whatever would yeah. happen, right? Sure. So this uh, inability to be resilient is, let's tell the truth of the matter, yeah. is nurture. Hmm. Because we baby babies yeah. too long. Yeah. Yeah. When you're three and you fall, mm -hmm. most people do what? Go yeah. pick them up. It's all right. No, get up, man. You cool. Yeah. Get up, baby girl. You cool. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm not talking about gender here. No doubt. I'm just talking about having enough foresight to raise kids like they're about to be somebody's grandmama mm -hmm. and somebody's granddaddy. All right. Not raise a five year old that they're about to be an eight year old. They're gonna be eight. Right. A five and eight year old, same thing. In terms of the lessons that we're talking about, we're talking about building resiliency. We're talking about character, Absolutely. right? We're talking about being a good person. No doubt. You can teach someone how to be a good person. Right. You can teach someone resilience. Yep. Most times, because we don't have the foresight, it just tends to happen to some people, and then we think those people are special. special. Right. But you really, they're not. Right. If we set up, and, and there are systems where you set up in terms of the way in which you rear young people, the way in which you talk to young people, the way in which you teach young people Absolutely. to be resilient, yep. right? So if I got a young Thundercat who's seven and he's killing it on the baseball field, killing it on the basketball court, mm -hmm. guess what? You won't ever be successful until you get by 12 with me. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Never. never. We're going to play one-on-one -on -one every day yeah. and I'm going to beat right. your ass every day. <laughs> Because it is, it it's is. already established that you got it. Yeah, you in got terms it. Of the you got talent. the juice. Yeah, now we gotta got to cultivate everything else. Right. Yeah. So what happened? Because it's gonna get to a point. Yes, sir. Where, everybody where got the juice. Everybody got the juice. <laughs> what are you gonna do then? Yeah. That's what we mean by I'm built for this. Yeah, man. You've been prepared for this adversity. Yes, sir. And to see it not as adversity is just part of the process. Part of the process. So when bro. I get when 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 the one on talk about got a chance to beat. Larry, his brother, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Then, it, okay, I, then beat Lynn Bias, oh, okay. Then beat Pat you and them, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, each step, yes, it's sir. like, oh, okay, but you got to face that adversity. At some point, those people were beating you. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are, if you, if, so, it's like this. If there's a cat, a phenom, who comes and goes through all of everything and always wins, mm -hmm. you haven't shown me nothing except what God gave you. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's good. That's your that's that's the nature. That's good. Right? You won the genetic lottery. Cool. <laughs> the genetic lottery. But the nurture, meaning the part that you have, uh, that you play, right? Mm -hmm. The part that you put in, the work that you put in, the way in which you decide to overcome ad adversity, that's what makes you authentically you and what makes you special. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what makes you special. Yes, Not sir. what God gave you. Yes, sir. What you do with what God gave you. Yes, sir. How you respond to the teachings and the learnings and the adversity that people put before you before you go into life. And then when life comes, because mm. we already know life going to present you with coming. adversity. Coming. So what I'm saying to us is somewhere we've missing the boat as teachers, as parents, as adults, in not putting and placing our young people in adverse situations. Mm -hmm. We're missing the boat. Yeah, that's good. Good. We want them to be all right because it makes us feel all right. It makes us feel safe. It makes us feel good. Yeah. The child could care less. Yeah. The seven-year-old could care less yeah. long as they out there playing. That's it. Long as they with you. That's it. That's it. Right? So so we're doing them a disservice if we don't place adversity in front of them. If we don't do it first. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm picking that up, man. I'm definitely picking up what listen, you're putting down. Man, listen, man. The greatest... Definitely. The greatest gift, uh, especially a parent, the greatest gift you can give your kids is a hard time. Mm. <laughs> the greatest gift you can give your kids is a hard time. Yes, sir. That's why you wake them up before they want to get woken up. That's why you don't ask them what they want to eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. That's why they have chores to do. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, whether they do them or not, now you you are pro- what you're doing now is just creating opportunities to teach. Mm. You te- creating learning opportunity, yeah. right? But you create and give them or you give them a hard time. That's the greatest lesson that you can give a young person. I promise sure. you, their teachers are gonna fall at your feet for it. Their coaches are gonna fall at your feet That's for sure. it. Anybody that has anything to do with your kids who has been through and understand what hard times are. Mm-hmm. Is is gonna benefit them so much more. It may not feel good to you in the moment. It yeah. may not look good to you in the moment, but I promise you, the greatest gift you can give your child mm. is a hard time. That's good. Necessary, man. Like I always look at it as my job is to prepare you for life. Yep. And life gonna uppercut you, hook you, knock you down, you get up, life gonna knock you down again. And I would rather you come to me later on in life and say, Hey, man, I didn't understand that, but I really appreciate Mm -hmm. it. I didn't like it in the moment, but now I get it and I appreciate it. Then you come to me years down the line and say, hey, man, why you didn't prepare me for this? If you knew I was going to go through this, man, why you didn't prep me and let me know? If you knew I was going to go through the storm, man, why you ain't packed me? It's like, it's like, and I'm going to get ready to land the plane. It's like when King and they was getting ready to cross the Edmunds Pettus Bridge, right? And they went. And I'll never forget, I think it was either the first or the second time. Whenever they went, of course, you had Bloody Sunday. But one time they went and they got up there and King kneeled. And when he kneeled, he started praying. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, nah, let's go back. And they was like, man, what you mean go back? We got to make the march. We got to go. He's like, nah, let's go back. Right? And this was when they was finna let him through. Right? Because I think they beat him Bloody Sunday. Then they came up and they was about to let him through. And he was like, nah, let's go back. And they like, what you mean go back? We up here. Let's go. And when they start walking back, they like, man, why we went back? He was like, we ain't had no food. We ain't had no blanket. Like, we ain't had nothing. We, we weren't prepared. Yeah. They was going to let us go. We was going to destroy ourselves. We had no resources. Right? And so he foreseen what was ahead. He saw what they was doing. And so when he stopped, it was like, no, nah, we got to go back. Even though y'all don't want to go back, we got to go back and we got to prepare for the journey that's ahead. Y'all want to go strictly off ambition. That's why you say, they say you need the young people for the energy and you need the elders for the wisdom, which leads me to the word of the day for rapid fire. Oh, what's we going to land a plane with it. Energy, baby. Talk to me. Uh, hmm. It can uh, neither be created nor destroyed. Right. Neither be created nor destroyed. So once I give you my energy, I gave you my energy in 1999. Yes, sir. Right? It is never going to be destroyed. Mm. It can change. It can shift. We go our ways. We, But it's always there. Just because you're in a relationship with someone doesn't mean you are exchanging energy. Mm. Yeah. Right? Talk you know it. it when you exchange energy with folks. How do we know that we're exchanging energy? Mm-hmm. It's when we have shared experiences. Got you. Right? So energy is the most um, powerful force in the universe. Mm-hmm. Energy is from, from water, energy. Uh, wind, energy. All of the natural elements, energy. Yeah. So you're not trying to, at every moment, especially when we're talking about dealing with ourselves and dealing with other people, you're not trying to destroy the energy. You're not trying to increase the energy, right? Yeah. You're not even trying to understand the energy. Mm. You're just trying to get in the energy flow. Mm. You want to get it. in the energy flow. Talk so what it. does get, getting in the en- energy flow looks like? For example, you come in, you mad. Yeah. Like you come in the studio and you mad. Yeah. My trying to get in the energy flow is not necessarily trying to solve your problem, mm-hmm. but figuring out what it is that you need in that moment. So ain't the number one thing that bothers me, like in relationships, and when I think about talk about relationships, right? Yep. I'm I'm not talking about just romantic relationships. Right. I'm just saying relationships in general. Is when um someone asks why. Mm-hmm. Right? They say, I might come in and I may have done something that pissed you off. Right. And you say, Why you do that? You're judging me. Mm. You're trying to control my energy. Yeah. You're trying to shift my energy. You're mm. trying to suck up my energy, right? Yeah. So this energy thing, when you can keep it in balance, you keep yours, I keep mine. Yes, so sir. if I come in mad or if I come in disturbed about something, maybe you say, um, let's say I'm I'm mad that this, these kids was just acting the fool today, mm-hmm. right? You may say, so how you feel about that? Oh, 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. What is it that you think you can do better tomorrow? Like, what are, what are going to be your strategies to make it better? Mm. Meaning, you're not sucking my energy. Right. In fact, you're feeding me. You're feeding my energy. You're forcing me to be a better me. No doubt. There's no judgment in that. It's good. You're pouring into me. It's good. You're pouring the energy into me. It's good. Right? So th that, that the energy thing is so powerful, bro. It's so powerful. Yet when you're able to be with someone and be in the presence of someone and that energy has this balance, that's where your peace lies. Mm. That's why a lot of people like, they think they like being by themselves because they don't have to have that battle of energies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. But the 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 objective in life, though, is to be able to balance and be in balance with your energy and anybody else's energy yeah. at any time. Because remember, we started out with each of us must turn inward. Yes, that was sir. the first part of the Sugar Boo court, yep. uh, card that we read today. Each person must turn inward. Mm -hmm. That's where you find the balance of your energy. Mm -hmm. And once you find the balance of your energy, that's when you're able to generate and create your peace. That's uh. Hey, man, ain't nothing left to say. Pick that up. Pick up what he putting down. We appreciate your ear. We appreciate your time. Man, oh, we doing the right. I got to dap you up on that. <laughs> we out of here, baby. Peace, man.